Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm Trevor with Maker Experiment, and in today's video, we're going to find out which spray paint is the best. Let's get into it. For this test, I'm going to be using the same type of testing squares that I used in the primer video that I did a couple weeks ago. If you haven't watched the primer video yet, I'm going to link it in the description below and put a card somewhere on the screen. That video was all about how to figure out the best primer for MDF and wood. So with that in mind, one of the top primers ended up being the Valspar primer. So that's the one I'm going to be using for this test. I'm going to prime all of these test pieces with the same primer so that it's as consistent as possible. So much like in that video, it's going to be testing in the same conditions, the same environment. I'm going to paint everything at the same time, and I'm going to do it in the same temperature range, and I'm going to dry them in the same spot. I'm going to do everything I can to keep this test as controlled as possible. With that in mind, I'm going to be testing nine different paints from a few different brands. So first up, I have the Krylon Fusion All-in-One. Then I have the Krylon Color Max. I have Rust-Oleum Enamel. The Rust-Oleum 2X. Iron Lac, which I bought at Hobby Lobby. Montana Gold that I bought from a local art supply store. Montana 94, also from the art supply store. Montana Black also from that store. And then I have Color Shot. So for this test, I didn't have enough of the white Color Shot to do the test. Uh, I actually ran out completely and I wasn't able to get another one in time for this test. So I'm just substituting the lightest color I had, which happened to be this green. Now I still have a blue one to compare against all the blues. I just don't have another white. I'm going to be testing two different colors. It's going to be a white as well as a blue. So I use a lot of white spray paints when it comes to the sign backers that I make. I also use a lot of colors. So I wanted to see how a color looked when it goes on with the primer, how well that color sprays. I picked blue because it's one of my brand colors as well as I just really like blue. The hope is that using a color as well as a white will give me a good indication of which spray paint brands are the best for certain applications. This is going to be for MDF and wood, and I want to be able to cover my laser cut edges. Now, I also want to be able to take it straight from the laser, be able to prime it and paint it, and have a really good finish and not have to worry about sanding off this residue or burn marks or anything like that. That's going to be my goal because it speeds up workflow if I don't have to sand that down. Now this is every single brand that I could buy locally. So anything you see here was purchased either from Home Depot, Lowe's, local art supply stores, uh, or Hobby Lobby. And with that, I tried to buy every single brand or brand line that I saw. So in Lowe's, I saw two brands, which were Krylon and the Krylon Fusion. Now there were more, but they didn't really have any colors. They were like only a white and only a black, which wasn't helpful for this test. Same with Rust-Oleum. They had a bare spray paint, but it was really only in black in my store. So that wasn't going to be helpful. In Hobby Lobby, the only one they had was Iron Lac. Michaels basically had the same uh, Krylon type paints. And then my local art supply store had all of the Montanas. And then there was one Home Depot in town that sells the color shot. Now for me personally, the Home Depot in town is going to stop carrying color shot. So that already kind of puts it unfortunately at the bottom of the list to start with, because if I can't buy it locally, it's just going to be harder to get stuff in on time and be able to meet type deadlines. So just check the availability in your town. You may actually have more paints available than what I do. I didn't wanna go through the trouble of buying them online and trying to ship them all here and get them all here in time. 
which is why I chose all of these locally and went out and bought them. Because in an ideal world, when I'm doing a project, I'm going to go to the store and just buy it and be able to do it the same day and not have to wait on shipping. But a lot of these are also available on Amazon and through websites that can get them to you in two or three days. So of these paints, in the past, I've only tried the Krylon, the Rust-Oleum, and the Color Shot. I have never used Montana. I have never used Iron Lac. I've heard that they are good. I had a lot of recommendations for the Montana Gold. So I have a lot of high hopes on that one. So hopefully it lives up to that. And I know that the enamel covers really well, but sometimes color selection can be uh, kind of sparse in comparison to the Montana line. So I know that these are good for sign backers. I have a feeling going into this that the Rust-Oleum enamel is going to do really well. And it, I have used it for sign backers and have had great results. So it'll be interesting. And I honestly don't know which one's going to win. Now, the process for this test is going to be pretty simple. I'm going to spray every one of these boards with a single coat of primer. I am then going to sand it down with about 320 or 400 grit sandpaper very lightly to just get it rough enough for the paint to adhere to it. When I'm doing this, I'm going to spray two to three coats and I'm going to do the same number of coats for every single paint. So if I have to do two coats for one, but three for another, I'll do all of them with three so that I know exactly how it'll turn out. The other thing I'm going to try to do is cover these laser cut edges. So I'm going to deliberately try to prime over those when I'm doing this because being able to cover the blackened edge is really important to a lot of people. Uh, so we're going to see if we can make that happen with all of these paints. So with all of that in mind, let's go ahead and we're going to prime all of these pieces. There are 18 total, uh, so it's going to take a little while, but let's go ahead and get started. Now that all of the pieces are primed, I did go ahead and sand them down. And now I am going to go through, paint each one of them. I'm going to paint one blue and one white from each brand and see how they perform. So here's the plan. I'm going to use the spray paint sugar to try to paint everything evenly. I'm also going to do multiple coats within the hour. So instead of waiting for one coat to dry and then spraying on a coat later, I'm going to go ahead, spray them all, then wait maybe 10, 15 minutes, spray them all again to get the second coat. And hopefully that will be enough. If I need a third coat, I'll do that again. But that should be quicker in this test to do this. And it should give me just as good a result if I were to wait. And actually it might give me better results if I'm not trying to wait for each coat to dry, uh, just because that could take days and days. So with that in mind, Let's go ahead and get started. First up, I have the blue Krylon Color Max. So as you can see while I'm painting, it is really windy here. Unfortunately, I have to spray paint outside. I don't have a way to do it inside. Uh, so I'm gonna do the best I can and hopefully it won't mess up any of the finish. Next up, I have the white Carline Color Max.
Next up, I have the blue Rust-Oleum enamel. Next up, I have the white Rust-Oleum enamel. Next up, I have the Krylon Fusion All-in-One in blue. Next, I have the Krylon Fusion All-in-One in white. Next up, I have Color Shot Splash, which is blue. Next, I have Color Shot in green. Because I don't have white, it's the lightest color I have. Next up, I have Rosolium 2X in blue. Next up, I have the Rustoleum 2X in white. Next, I have Montana Black in the blue color. So for this one, I actually have to take the cap off, dump this black ring, and then put the cap on because this one doesn't actually come with a cap. I also can't use the trigger on this because it doesn't fit around the ring. It's too windy. Okay, next up is the Montana black in the white color. It is getting super windy and very hard to spray. So hopefully this doesn't mess up the results too bad. Next up I have iron lac in blue. I won't be able to use the trigger because the ring's a little small. Next up is Iron Lack in white. So unfortunately with this one, I actually have a defective can because as soon as I sprayed it, it turned into a web of paint and then immediately stopped working. So you can hear it. There's nothing, I can cushion it down. Nothing's happening. So this can is defective. So I'm, this one's out of the test. Next up is Montana 94 in blue. Next up is Montana 94 in white. Next up is Montana gold in blue. Again, we have to take the cap off, take the ring out, put the cap back on before you can spray it.
I will say that this one's a little bit harder to spray on because it's very low pressure. And last up, I have the Montana Gold in white. So I just finished spraying the first coat. I'm gonna go back through and spray all of them again. I'm not gonna bother filming that uh, because it's gonna be just kind of boring. So a few things, a couple of them just got super windy. So we'll see how the finishes come out. Some are spraying, some brands are spraying more easily than others, but we'll see what happens. So I'm gonna go ahead and coat them a second time. Once everything is dry, I'll come back and show you the results and talk through them. It's been 24 hours since I painted everything. Most of it is dry, only one of them isn't, and that's because of an issue we had. So during this process, there's a few things that I made sure to try to keep under control. I primed everything with the same primer. I shook all of the cans to their proper recommended time, which is either one or two minutes. I applied them all within their wet method of painting, which means to apply all of the coats that you want to use within one hour of the first coat. I also primed everything first and then sanded those down before applying the paint. I painted them all on the same day within the same time frame. Uh, everything about it that I could control, I attempted to control to the best of my ability. With that in mind, I had a few hiccups along the way. Uh, so it gets super windy here in Vegas. So what happened was on some of them, the wind picked up more than others because I have to paint outside and it, it's main drawback for that was paint would just fly into the wind. It didn't necessarily hurt the coating or what I was doing. Uh, but I did waste a lot of paint just flying into the environment and I couldn't help that. The next thing that happened was it was so windy that even the ones in my garage that were 10 feet from the door, I had them on a board that was drying. There were about six of them. The wind was actually so strong, it knocked that board over onto the ground, which had both the paint as well as the square for it. And it broke the stem of the Rust-Oleum enamel. So when it came time to spray the second coat, I couldn't spray the second coat of the white Rust-Oleum enamel because the stem was broken, it would no longer work. Another thing I ran into on the iron lac, and I'll show you when I cover that one, is the white never actually sprayed. Uh, it kind of came out like a spider web and immediately clogged up and I tried to switch caps and nothing would work. So there was something defective about that can. With all of this in mind, I did rank the paint in what I felt was the best for me in my environment. So the things that I took into account were how easy was it to spray? How easy did it go on? How easy did it coat? Uh, all of them have different pressures. So some came out really fast in a huge fan. Some are really small spots. And, you know, there's some that will spray more easily than others some are easier to coat than others and that try to take that into consideration as i went through this and not just the finish that came out of it so the second piece of criteria was the finish so the finish that it came out with and the you know how it looked overall the third option i considered was the colors so a lot of these brands have a few colors or, you know, the main colors that a lot of people use because they're popular. And then a few brands have a ton. And I mean like every color you can think of, kind of like how you go into the store to buy paint for your house and they custom mix it. And you have, you know, five shades of green. Uh, the same is true about some of these spray paint brands. So I tried to keep that into consideration as well. Cost does kind of play into it just because you want to know what it costs for the most part. Uh, it doesn't deter me from choosing the right paint for me. We just need to make sure we calculate that into our cost when we're working with customers. 
And the fourth factor that's more just subjective to me is uh, frustration level. So there some of these paints I've used for years and just started getting frustrated with for one reason or another. And, you know, I want to take it into consideration that, you know, some brands, you may have one piece that turns out phenomenal and looks great. Uh, but maybe 75% of the time you're struggling to get it to look good or you're struggling to get to coat evenly or whatever that may be because, you know, it's hard to control the spray paint can in general. No two spray paint cans seem to be 100% identical. There always seems to be some little nuance among them. Uh, a good example is the Rust-Oleum enamel. I've used that many times and then this time the first spray of the blue one just came out in splotchy finish looks and it continued that way through the whole thing. So sometimes you just get a defective can that you can't do anything about. So a lot of that is going to be the consistency. So I've used a few cans of each of these now at this point just to try them out behind the scenes and see what happens. And some of them have much higher consistency than others. And I wanted to take that into consideration as well. So with that in mind, I am going to go through these in my ranking from the worst, in my opinion, the one that I had the most trouble with, to the best. So there were nine brands in total. Of those brands, there were two colors, and I'm gonna cover both of those. To start off with, I will say that this one was probably not where it would have landed if things had gone well. So this one was the Rust-Oleum enamel. Honestly, normally it would probably land like fourth. And the reason it didn't is because of the issues I had during the process. So one of them was, and let me grab the pieces. So this is the white. The white one is one of the ones that decided to take a dive in my garage when the wind picked up. So I never uh, got to coat it a second time. And this one, and I'll show you here, when that board blew over, there were six spray paint cans on top of it and only one of them broke. And the white enamel was one of them. So what happened? was inside of here hopefully that's good enough so the you can kind of see that the stem snapped off at an angle which made it so that the cap which is normally attached has the other part of the broken stem so i if i try to put the cap back on and spray it it just keeps wobbling around and then when you spray the paint just collects down in this ring and that's the issue that happened on the white one so I never could spray the second one, and I found it weird that of the six, that's the only one that broke. Uh, so it's it's kind of like, <laughs> kind of like Karma just didn't want Rust-Oleum enamel to win uh, because the blue one also had an issue. So the blue one, and you can go back in the footage and see the splotchiness while it's spraying. I did spray a second coat on. It's still wet. It looks awful, uh, but let me try to show it so you can see it's there we go see all the ripples it kind of looks like you threw a rock into a river and then little spots just appeared so i think this can in general just had an issue i never really got that can to spray correctly and this was not normal so i've used rust-oleum enamel multiple times in the past for black and white for backers and it worked great so i this one take with a grain of salt because this was like the perfect storm where everything went wrong for this one neither one worked well uh, one broke the other one had a can issue it does come back to consistency a little bit i have I've had a few cans be defective from that one, but in general, I would say it would normally come like fourth or fifth because it does, when it goes well, 
it does leave a nice, clean, smooth, glassy looking finish. This is one of those ones where sometimes you just get problems with it and it has that frustration level where things just don't seem to go right. And that's what happened in this case. So that's the reason it ended up 10th. Again, this one probably would have landed fourth or fifth in reality if everything worked well uh, based on past experience, but that's what happened in this case. Next up is Color Shot. So Color Shot is actually a newer brand to me. I actually found them on Instagram. A bunch of other makers were posting it because they were using it. Uh, they did send me some that I could use and that's what I'm using for the video. I do like a lot of parts about it. Mainly, you know, the fact that it's more, uh, they're trying to go more on the environmental side of spray paint, using things that aren't quite as harmful using different kind of propellants. Uh, I do think that somewhat affects uh, the result because I did have more trouble with this one. Um, the white and the black I've used in the past, I never really got a good coating. Uh, it always seemed to be a little bit of a pain in the butt. You do have to shake it, I think longer than the can recommends too. And the surface finish, I've never really gotten a good one. And that's, that's part of why it ranked uh, eighth in this case. So here's the samples. So first, I didn't have white anymore and I couldn't find it. I went to the local Home Depot. And so in my area in Vegas, I did go to Home Depot. I did ask for color shots. They showed me where it was. There's only one store out of the five near me that actually carried it. I had to go to every one of them and find out. When I went in and I talked to them, all of the color shot was discounted. And I said, you know, what's going on? Why is it discounted? And they said that they're not gonna carry it anymore because it didn't sell well. So for me, that also ranked it down because it's not easy to get a hold of. And I should have mentioned that as one of the ranking methods I used is how easy it is to get it. So can I go in town and buy it if I need to? And it looks like color shot for me. I have to go and order it through Home Depot's website from now on. And I just don't have the time. I need to go pick up a paint the same day and bring it back. And if I can't do that, that's a problem. So that's part of why it ranks so low. This one, the green. So it's going to, the surface finish actually isn't that bad. It did turn out pretty well. There is a spot and I cannot get it to pick up on camera here. This may be the best angle. So there's a spot right here where it's kind of rippled and the, there you go in the light. You can kind of see the blemish. So I don't know why it did this because that's the only spot it did it in. Everywhere else actually is pretty smooth. It didn't do a bad job on this one, but it's very noticeable. If I was on a project, I'd have to sand this back down and do it again. And that's why this one ranked pretty low. The blue, unfortunately, had the same issue. Where, let me find it. You can kind of see it over here along the edge. It has the same ripple effect here. And that's not good. So between the availability the spraying process and how that was as well as the surface blemishes on the final product that is why this one came in at number eight number seven is krylon color max so the krylon one i did buy at low so it's fairly easy to get a hold of uh, but let's go through these so i have the blue and the blue one actually came out pretty well I don't really have any complaints about the blue one. It turned out nicely. Uh, yeah, it's, it's good. It, I would be happy with this coating. So, however, on the white one, and I don't think this is going to pick up on camera. So you can see it in the corner and it may lose focus, but there are really the same thing that happened on the color shot where it had those like weird bubbles, blemishes. 
The same thing happened here, but only on the white piece. So it has them on the edges in that corner. I don't know what happened. And this, I mean, it all sprayed evenly and it didn't look like this during the spraying process. So I'm not sure what happened. And if I can't control it, then that's gonna be a problem. So that's why it came in at number seven. So a beat out color shot because color shot had it happen on both pieces and the color max only had it happen on the white. Um, also color max is easier to get. It's more readily available. Uh, so if you do like the color max brand, uh, I would choose it over the color shot. So this is kind of like the defining line in the sand because everything from here on out was the details. So, all of them had a fairly good finish on them. They all turned out really well. They'd all be things that I think could go to a customer. So now it comes down to ease of getting it, um, ease of spraying, the coating itself, how easy it was to coat, how easy it was to recoat, um, the color options and how many there are, as well as you know just overall experience and how much I liked working with it. With that in mind, coming in at number six is the Krylon Fusion All-in-One. So again, these all have a good finish. So any one of them from the top six you can use and I think you'd be happy with. Uh, some just have a little bit easier application. Some had uh, more color options, whatever it might be. And I'll talk through that. but. For this one, the blue has a great finish. I can't pick up any blemishes on here. Uh, I don't see many other than like particulates that happen to land in it. And the white, uh, the same. It looks nice. It worked out nice. Again, same particulates. And I will say that this one had more particulates than others, even though they were all sprayed within minutes of each other. With the Fusion all-in-one at my store, so again, I bought this one at Lowe's. Uh, when I went in and bought it, there were not a lot of color options. I mean, they're the normal ones that you need, you know, maybe one shade of each color. I do find that most customers, that's not enough colors, and that's why it came in at number six. Um, it just doesn't have enough options for most of the people that I work with. So coming in at number five is Iron Lac. So Iron Lac is actually kind of like a graffiti brand spray paint. Um, I got it at Hobby Lobby here in town. It had about the same color choices as Lowe's did for the Fusion. Uh, but there are more color options online for this one that I can get if I needed to do so. So the one thing about this is it painted really well. Uh, it painted super easy. It probably would have ranked higher if I didn't run into the issue I had. So the issue I ran into is the white never sprayed. Um, and I will show you. So... I, it must have been a defective can, but when I went to spray it, it immediately created like a web of paint that basically solidified on the cap. I did try a different cap and the issue actually was in the stem. Something happened where it didn't um, want to spray at all, no matter what cap I used. So the white one, uh, was kind of just effective and you could argue that it belonged lower in the place because of that reason because it didn't work but when I went to rank them the blue sprayed so nicely and so evenly that if the white one had worked it may have ended up first and the blue I mean the surface finish I barely had any particulates. I'm talking like flawless. You can see how the light just reflects off of it. This is a really, really nice coating. And 
it sprayed on super smooth. It was easy to use. It was enjoyable to work with. And that's, I don't say that about spray paints very often. They're usually a hassle and a pain in my butt. So again, I do like this one. I wish this one had not been defective. Uh, it was maybe five or six dollars at Hobby Lobby. But again, you can buy them online. Uh, just keep it in mind that if, if you have this near you, try it out. I think you'd like it. I think you'd enjoy it. Uh, I cannot speak to quality. These are the only two cans, really, that I've used of this one. Uh, but I do like it. It had a great pressure. It wasn't as high a pressure to me as the ones from Home Depot and Lowe's, like the Rust-Oleum and the Krylon. Uh, it felt more like I had more control. And it felt like I you know, where I was pointing it, it was going to do what I wanted. And I've never felt that out of uh, the other spray paints that ranked lower. So just keep that in mind as you're working with this. You know, as I'm starting to get into these more graffiti paint brands that are more for painting murals and things like that, I did feel that I had way more control over what was happening. And the ones from big box stores, I just didn't have that experience. Ranking fourth was actually the Rust-Oleum 2X. And only for one reason. The only reason that this one ranked above the Iron Lac is because the white Iron Lac just didn't work. Uh, if the white Iron Lac worked, I think Rust-Oleum 2X would have flipped positions and been uh, one step down. But when I look at these, they do have a good finish. I don't have any blemishes. So there are some particulates uh, like there were on others. Again, if you shine it in the lights, you can't really see anything. Well, it's hard to tell in the white anyway, which is why I chose a colored one too. So this one, you can see it's got a good finish. It's a brand that's easy to get. It is readily available. It's in multiple stores. Uh, the biggest thing with the Rust-Oleum 2X is, for me, it's been hit and miss. Sometimes I have a great experience with it. Sometimes I have a miserable experience. And it's not, you know, a lot of it could be because I'm in an uncontrolled environment where I have to spray outside. If I was in a spray paint booth, maybe the effect would be different. But I like to keep that in mind that this, again, is in my environment that I have to work in. So if I'm having trouble with the wind or the environment while I'm painting, and sometimes I have really good results and sometimes it's a nightmare, it adds to the frustration level. And I've had to buy three cans of the same paint to get one project done uh, because either a can was defective or it... Uh, wasn't spraying evenly, whatever it may be. And that's kind of why it ranked where it did. Again, nothing bad about 2X. If you like it, uh, keep using it. It's It's got a lot of color options. Uh, there are still brands with more color options. But for off the shelf, big box store, easy to get in a wide color scheme, uh, the 2X is a pretty good option. Taking the third spot and the first of the podium is Montana Black. So the cool thing about the Montana, pretty much all Montana paints, uh, minus maybe the 94 line, is they, so they come just like this and you have a safety ring. So you take the cap off, there's a black ring. You have to take that off before you can paint it with it. I did find this to be a nice feature because I have had times where the cap has fallen off of a paint. It went crashing to the floor, it hit the nozzle just right, and then it sprayed everywhere. Which, you know, is kind of like a, how often is that gonna happen? But it did strike me as something that's a really nice feature to have. I do like it. Uh, especially when I'm storing my paints because see if I'm pushing down I can't do anything and I do like that it's a nice little safety feature 
So with that, there are a couple of things that I found interesting about this paint. So for one, on the can, it's gonna be actually, it may be hard to read it out, but it actually says graffiti spray paint. So this, <laughs> you know, that one was designed for graffiti. And to me, graffiti is, you know, huge wall murals, a wide fan spray, and that's exactly what happened. So it is a very high pressure, probably closer to the pressures of like Krylon and Rust-Oleum where it comes out pretty quickly. It does have a wide fan when it's doing it. And it's, it did spray really nicely and it did coat really well. The interesting thing is the texture that comes out of it. So it's not super smooth. It's kind of like a, it's a matte with a little bit of texture that kind of looks like you sprayed it onto a wall which makes sense considering it's a graffiti paint and it's not going to pick up on the white one i'm sure because it's going to be hard to see so the the finish is very consistent it's the same finish all around the piece same with the blue it's the same finish all around the piece and this probably is not going to pick up but there is it's got a texture so it looks like you maybe sprayed it on a wall and picked up the wall texture of it. It looks really nice. So this one actually gives you some texturing options when you're doing this. And that's really cool. I like it. It's, I don't know if you can tell from that or not. It's not like a super gloss smooth no blemish type of look it's it's got the same consistency all around the piece but it's definitely got some texture to it and i don't know um honestly try it for yourself and you'll see what i mean it's hard to explain uh what i'm seeing but i like it it worked out really well i can see uses for it this wouldn't be my go-to paint at all times this would be more like a, oh i want that specific paint finish uh let me use that one that's where this would come into play and i will say that among the montana line there are a ton of options so there are ones that and you'd have to look it up there are so many colors there are different things when it comes to like glow in the dark or neon or all of that stuff that they have that i think are really good which is why honestly montana landed in the top three because of how the overall experience they all sprayed easily they all are fairly easy for me to get there are a ton of options the only drawback to montana is the price so it's i don't know seven to eight maybe even nine dollars a can which isn't the easiest thing to swallow when it comes to price but they do a phenomenal job so i do like the montana black it's just a little bit too high pressure for normal every time use but anytime i need that textured type of finish i'm definitely going to go with the black coming in at this silver position in second place is montana gold now you may be asking yourself why and i'll explain it here in a second so this is labeled as a professional spray paint it works very well it is great so montana gold is a low pressure paint and as you saw me spraying it i had to get super close to the piece for it to spray out and on to what i'm doing with the standard cap that comes on it uh, it works really well i like how it comes out it's fantastic but it seems to be more meant for up close and personal if you've ever seen an artist spraying on a building or spraying in a gallery and they're maybe two inches away from the workpiece and it's got a lot of control they're usually using the gold line so i love that you can get super close to your piece and get super fine details with a spray paint because that's ridiculous and i do like that 
for me, for painting signs, uh, sometimes it's actually not as easy to get a good coating all the way around the sign. Now, there are super small pieces I do where that comes in really handy because I found that super small pieces with that one, it's not blowing them away as I'm spraying the paint. It's doing it nice and light and it's keeping the piece in one place. Every other paint before this sprays it across the table because it's too high pressure. So that's why I like it. So with that, the surfaces are fantastic. So again, the white, it's gonna be hard to see on camera, but it's next to flawless. Uh, very few particulates, maybe like a handful. Uh, the blue is the same way. So it's nice. You can see the light reflecting off the surface. It is just a great paint to use. So all of the Montana paints I actually bought locally at a store called Blick Art Supplies. There's also a local art store about three minutes away that carries the Montana line as well. They just have less color options for it. So I go to the local one for the colors they have. If I have to go to the other store for, you know, the additional colors, I can do that. So it is fairly easy for me to get here where I am. I will say it's not easy everywhere. You may have to order it online. The Montana Gold line also does have that safety ring on it because it doesn't come with a cap. And taking the top spot in the gold medal, Montana 94. This one surprised me, honestly. I wasn't sure how this would fit in. I kind of thought Montana 94 would be like the the low end part of Montana's brand. I don't know why. Uh, probably because it didn't come with the safety rings. It had caps with it. And I thought, hey, you know, maybe it'll work out. So I just grabbed it. And it is a, it says it's a low pressure spray paint that has a matte finish. So it is a lower pressure than the Montana Black and it's a little bit higher pressure than the Montana Gold. So it's kind of an in-between the two from a pressure standpoint. And it's, it's still got a lot of colors, a lot of options. I felt that this one coated more easily than the Gold because it has that little bit higher pressure when I'm doing signs. I think this one will coat more easily Again, for finer details, I'm definitely going with the Montana Gold, but with the large pieces that I have to coat a lot at once, the Montana 94, I think, is going to be my new go-to. It works really well. I like it a lot, and it, it was a good experience overall. So, with this one, uh, there are almost no surface blemishes, just like the Montana Gold. The white, it's gonna be hard to tell. I mean, even if the light catches it right, it's just too light to pick anything up. But it did work out really well. The blue, let me see if I can get a little light shimmer here. It did spray really well. I do like it. So this one, and I would say the Montana Gold are definitely the two favorites of mine. They both worked really well. So in, in my case, the Montana Gold and the Montana 94 are actually one and two. The, they could be two and one. They, you could flip flop them depending on what you're doing. So for normal sign usage, the Montana 94 I think would be better for larger pieces where you have to spray more of an area. The Montana Gold is better for small details where you're spraying a smaller piece. So I would end up using both. Uh, I don't think it's going to be independently one or the other. I've also noticed that for sign backers in the past, Rust-Oleum Enamel worked really well for black and white as a sign backer. So I do still use that at times. So when it comes down to what is the best spray paint, it honestly depends. And it's completely up to you because you're the one that needs to use it. 
So what's the best for me is maybe not the best for you. So I prefer the Montana line. I like pretty much all three of the lines inside of Montana. Uh, but Montana Gold and Montana 94, to me, were the two best in this case. They are also more expensive and everything else, but they do have a lot of colors, they have a lot of options, and sometimes that's more important to the client. But ultimately, it's, it's your call. I suggest you go through and you do the test yourself. Uh, try them out, see what you think, and see which one works best for you. Again, I'm basing this off of, I have to spray paint outside, the type of items I'm painting, which happen to be signs, and how the coverage works, the color options that I get. That's why I made the decision I did. So for me, again, it's Montana 94 and Montana Gold as the top two, and the two that I'll be using the most moving forward. So I know this has been a lot of information. I'm going to leave links in the description below to all of the paints in case you're trying to figure out where to get them. The only paint that I did get for this was the color shot. All of the rest of them I paid for myself. Uh, so it would mean a lot to me if you liked the video, if you gave it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so that you know when I come out with new videos. I love doing these kind of tests and figuring them out. Uh, it just takes quite a bit of money to make it happen. And the more support I have, the better it is for the channel and the more that I can do. If you have any questions about any of the paints that I use or my experience, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I'd be happy to help the best that I can. And be sure to check me out on Instagram at Maker Experiment where I share processes like this along the way. So that's going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.